Hi, I'm Lindsay. We here at Spark Fund realize that if you've never set up a soldering station before, getting started can be a little intimidating. That's why today we're going to take you through the procedure step by step. So, now that we've got our location chosen for our soldering station, first things first, we're going to go ahead and open up this box. First, we've got the soldering station uh, instruction booklet. We're going to set that aside to look at later. The first thing we're going to look at is our iron wand. Very important when you're unpackaging this is to make sure you take the plastic tip off. Another important thing to remember about this piece is that this is the portion that gets hot. Next, we're going to look at the soldering cradle. And this has a sponge in it, which we will apply water to later. This is where you're going to keep your tip of your wand clean. And then the actual cradle, which is where you will place the wand when it's not in use, so you don't burn down your soldering station. Here's the last piece of the soldering unit we're going to unpackage. So this piece is kind of like the brain of the soldering unit. On the front, you have the dial, which you can use to adjust the wand temperature, as well as the input for the, for the wand plug. On the side, we have our on-off switch, and on the back, our outlet cord. So now that we've unpackaged the components, we can go ahead and put the station together. First, I'm going to make sure the station is in the off position. Next, I'm going to plug it in. Notice that the light on the front does not turn on when I do this. Now, we're going to take the wand and plug it in to the input. We're going to make sure that the orientation of the wand cord and the input are similar. So I'm going to plug that in and then go ahead and screw it down. Now we're ready to turn on the station and set our temperature to about 350 degrees Celsius. So now that our soldering station is put together, we need to put some water on our sponge so that when we need to clean our soldering wand, we can do so. We're just going to drop a little bit of water in there and the sponge soaks it right up. Next, we're going to tin the tip of the iron. I'm going to put on my, my glasses just to make sure I don't get anything in my eye and grab my solder. We're going to take the iron and we're just going to apply solder onto the iron. These fumes burning off are just rosin, the rosin core of the solder. It's not dangerous or harmful. So basically we want to apply solder so it covers that tip pretty well. Over time, as you use your soldering iron, you'll notice that oxidization forms on the tip. It's very important to keep this clean. In order to clean off your tip, what you're going to do is apply a little bit of solder and then wipe it off either on your sponge or your brass sponge. They both have the same effect. This leaves you with a nice shiny silver tip free of oxidization. Now we're going to show you how to do a simple through hole soldering joint. I don't want to use the very tip of the iron tip to make contact. I want to use the side, making sure that the iron makes contact both with the circle and the pin. So we're going to put it on the side here so it's making contact with both pieces. I'm going to count to one. And then I'm going to apply my solder. Apply the solder for one, and then pull away. This should give us a volcano-shaped piece of solder. After I've soldered the joint, I need to apply more solder to my iron tip to protect it from oxidization before putting it back in the cradle. In the event that you need to change out your iron tip, you're going to want to turn the iron off and wait until it's cooled down. If for some reason you can't do this, you're going to want to use one of these. This is just a rubber pad that is convenient for use when you want to handle hot parts. So I'm going to take the iron and use the pad to unscrew this piece right here in a counterclockwise motion. Now I can take those pieces off like that and actually replace the tip. So that's it. And hopefully now you understand the basics of what it takes to set up a soldering station. And remember, experience is the best teacher, so don't be afraid to jump right in.